a little ingredients. On this video, I'll show how to install open source point of sales, also known as open source POS, onto a subdomain. Um, so there are a couple things you're gonna need is first, you're obviously gonna need the software. So let's go ahead and go look for the software. So let me go ahead and search. So I'm gonna search for OS, POS. That's just short for open source POS. That seems to bring me less trash. Um, and then you're gonna find it right here. This is the one you want. You want the, the GitHub uh, under J J E K K O S. So we're gonna go ahead and click on clone, download zip. We're gonna let it download. If you saw the first video, you'll you'll notice that I already I already downloaded. So, but we're gonna do it again in case you haven't. So that's downloaded. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and close the browser. So I'm open my files manager. Now if, if you're using Windows, it's the same setup. It just looks a little bit different. But what you want to do is navigate to wherever you downloaded the, your, that zip file to. So I'm going to downloads. And you, you can see I already had one. So let me delete this one. This is the one I just did right now at 1020 this morning. So we'll click on it to extract it. If you're running Windows, what you're gonna do is right click and tell it to extract all. Don't, if you try to do it within the, the zip, sometimes it gives you a hard time. So yeah, just do yourself a favor, unzip it, call it a day. So we're gonna go ahead and unzip it. Okay, it's almost done. And there it is. So we're gonna go ahead and close that, close that. And now here's the here's the folder. Now for to do it to run a subdomain, you have to do a couple things. One is you have to edit your HT access file. So I'm gonna go ahead and view, show hidden, or you could do a control H and it's gonna do the same thing. You want to get to this file here out of the main folder. I'm gonna open it up with whatever text editor you, you want to use. Oops. And let me zoom in. Okay. So right here, right after, right before the Apache 2.4, what you want to do is enter the following lines. Copy. Okay. So remember, after the Apache, excuse me, before the Apache, and after ignore uh, index ignore, you want to actually enter these these lines right here. So and the one that's important, it's here, right here. This is what's going to be your subdomain. So on mine, I want to create mine as OSPOS. Okay. So that's what my subdomain is going to be called. Once you enter that, you're going to go ahead and save it and close it. Close that. The next thing you're going to do, and let me zoom back in, is go to your applications folder, go to your config folder, and then I always make a copy of the database, the original file, just so I don't, in case I need to back up of it. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm just gonna paste it back and there's the file. Now I can actually open this, this file here. Now this information, you would have got it from your provider or if you're doing it yourself, um, you obviously know it. So we're gonna navigate to the bottom and if you downloaded one that actually has, it doesn't have any of this stuff here, you know, the, the section from after it, that it looks like this, it's good. The only thing that this one is telling you kind of the information and, and giving you some info. So all you're gonna do is here, 
if you're using uh, some kind of provider, they'll give you the information. The username is what username for the database. So mine is C111. The password for mine is 12345. Because remember, it's just for testing. Definitely, if you're doing a production, you don't want to do that. And then the database name, uh, if I can remember what it is, my database name is going to be this. Okay, so once you have these four things entered, you're ready to save this and close it. Okay, the third thing you're going to end up doing is now, let me get, let me actually navigate out of this. You're going to go to wh whoever your provider is or yourself. On mine, I'm using a, a test a ISP config that I have running on a virtual box. So for testing, it works excellent. So here, what I'm going to do is create a, a subdomain and click on new subdomain. The host is going to be the name of the of what the host is going to be. And all you're looking for is the first word, you know, not the whole mydomain.com or whatever. So on mine, it's going to be OSPOS. And my, my redirect type is going to be to the L, to the left. I want this, this name is going to be to the left of it. And then the path is going to be forward slash OSPOS. Now, the question is, why don't I put the WW or the web and so forth? Because it assumes you're already in that folder. So that's why you just have to enter the folder that you need. Click on save. So that part's done. Now, the, if you notice, the domain name is going to be ospos.localsite.net. My domain is localsite.net. Once that piece is, is out of the way, now we're ready to create a folder. So let me put this out of the way. Let me move this because we're going to get back to this one. Okay, so let me move this. And we're going to open the file server. So I'm going to connect to my file server. And if you notice here, I won't, I don't have, I'm actually in the website itself now. Let me zoom in. I'm going to create a folder now. So I'm going to right click to this, create directory. And this is going to be the OSPOS. Remember how I, I told it where does it go? This would be the actual folder. Okay, press OK. So what I'm going to do on the right hand side, I'm going to go to the o OSPOS. And I'm just going to drag everything. So I did a select all from the left. And I'm going to push it over to the right. So I'm holding my button, letting it go. And there it is. Now it's getting uploaded. Okay, so it's almost done uploading. Uh, override yes okay so now everything got uploaded let me go ahead and zoom out okay the last thing I'm gonna do and I'm going to open my PHP my admin I'm gonna log in remember how I already had a database ready but you notice that I don't, I don't have anything in there because I haven't uploaded the actual database so I'm going to import, and I'm going to choose the file. So I'm going to navigate. I'm going to navigate to my download folder, to the open source POS, and I'm going to navigate to database. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it. So let me, let me go back a little bit. So here's my downloads. Here's the folder that I had actually downloaded. You can see it here it was today at 1022. Then I'm going to go to down database, my database folder, and I'm going to find this one database.sql. Click on open, and now I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the bottom of this. Here it is, and I'm going to click on go. And now this whole database is actually 
upload it to the server. And we're actually pretty much done with this. I'm gonna zoom out. I mean, I'm gonna log out, get this thing out of the way. But no, actually, I need it. So now I'm gonna navigate to my subdirectory. Remember how it was open source POS dot local site dot net. And here we are. If you notice now the site is ospos.localsite.net and it knew exactly what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and the username is admin and the password is the by default is point of sale. Singular, not plural, singular. Press go. And you're gonna notice now up here is going to push you to the same subdomain plus everything else that it needs. And you can see now, once you actually see this, this page, you're good. If you see a white page, something went wrong. But if you notice, here's that folder that we, the, the, the string that we had actually added to the, the HT access file. Again, all that good jazz, subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.